Hello listener, I'm Harland, I'm one of your captains of 20,000 Leagues Under the Internet. I wanted to give a little announcement, we are going to be updating our publishing days. Normally these episodes come out on Mondays, you're going to push them back to Fridays moving forward. So you're listening or watching this video or audio right now, and that is May 2nd. Uh, the next episode will not come out until May 13th. Thank you for listening. We appreciate your patience as we transition into a new schedule and we'll talk to you later. Hello and welcome to 20,000 Leagues Under the Internet. I am your captain this week, Harlan Spinks, and joined with me, as always, are John Carr and Kyle Luck. Go ahead and say hello, boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> hello, boys. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to talk about some internet stuff, uh, but before we get into the show, we want to <laughs> ask you to go follow all of our socials if you have a phone, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it's at 20k leagues pod pretty much everywhere. Um, it, except, if you're driving, pull over and do it. Yes, be safe. Uh, hands at 10 and 2, um, <laughs> which I think they actually updated. I think it's like 3 and 9 now. Yeah. 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 So scratch that. 3 and 9, pull over, go follow us. Um, we have full videos on YouTube. Uh, I'm posting clips to TikTok and Instagram and some other fun things there. So, at 20K Leagues Pod, appreciate it. All of it, it's where you can find it. Yes, except for the OnlyFans, which I did try to get this last week, like officially <laughs> set up. Yeah, so what was the process with that? They just said no, because well, there's no boobies. I have to just I say really quick, I loved just my phone going, ticka ding, ticka ding, and I'm looking down and like <laughs> notifications like, log into your OnlyFans account. And I was like... <laughs> yeah, 20, they don't like numbers in the username, I think, so I had to spell out 20,000, um, <laughs> okay. which was super annoying. Which is almost 20,000 characters long. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a lot. We would have been right back to where we started when we still had that fucking comma. Yeah. Um, fuck. But then, like, you have to take photos of yourself to prove uh -huh. that it's you to make an OnlyFans account because they have adult stuff on there. Uh huh. Uh huh. And I don't know. They send me a, a, a list of stuff that, like, possibilities of why it got denied. And mm -hmm. one of them was saying that, like, if your profile avatar doesn't match or isn't, like, a face. Uh -huh. Then they won't. They might not like, you know, approve you. Did they think you're? So if it's three caricature faces. Oh, yeah, oh. I don't know, man. Yeah, because I made that small social thing recently that has like the name and then our three faces. So I think it thought maybe I was a bot, but we're totally real, and I just want to share with all our fans <laughs> my feet pics. Yeah, that's yeah. all it's gonna be. <laughs> Hobbit feet. How else are we supposed yeah. to? Yeah, we're supposed to fund this podcast somehow, so we're gonna do it via feet. Yeah. I know it's it was a real bummer because I was really curious to see if anybody would just start sending us money on OnlyFans, <laughs> but we'll never know now. Yeah. So wait, we're forever, it's we're forever bad. banned. I, Shadow banned? No, I think if I like put, maybe it'll just be my own personal OnlyFans. Yes, it should be your face. I don't know. It should be your uh, face. It'll I'll put. Really I'll buy a, a stupid little captain's hat well, to at least stay on brand. Once you get with, right, come on. Once you get approved, yeah. though, you can just change the photo. No. I, I mean, who knows? God, sure. Why not? Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe we well, can... It's a lot of next, effort for a joke. Next time we're all <laughs> three really together. Is. I don't know, guys. I don't think we put enough effort into this. I think the next time we're all together... <laughs> no, this is... Kyle is spearheading this now. <laughs> the, ne the next time we're all together at your wedding. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, we'll take some OnlyFans pics. We'll get a three... Like a, a three... A, a three... A photo of our face uh, yes. across. So we can do all a together. real life version of the of the animated thing you do and that should, that should suffice and then we'll, yeah everything's three-way on our uh only fans three we'll have to picks. yeah we'll we'll have to trick the only fan only fans into thinking that it's like a thruple account yeah 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 this week's topic we are heading into international waters again to stay on brand uh we're going international boys and this week we are talking about wechat Ooh. So let's let's dive in. 
Okay, so WeChat is. I didn't even know it was a. It was. You said we're going international, but I didn't know fully what that meant. I thought you were literally just making a joke about international waters. No, WeChat <laughs> is a Chinese <laughs> super app. Um, okay. Okay. It does everything. Um, okay. And and a whole lot more. <laughs> But um, before I, want, I get into WeChat itself, we need to understand the landscape of like Chinese, the Chinese internet, when mm -hmm. the internet was first sort of coming out and being readily available mm -hmm. to a lot of people. So in like the early 2000s, China relied on outsourcing their internet and it was basically all, the infrastructure was all run and owned by Cisco. Um, okay. which and interesting, and even then it was a super the thong song guy. <laughs> I <laughs> wish, man. <laughs> Cisco, oh, so, uh, Cisco got, oh, communications, got it. Cisco communications, yes, on board. And also, don't they clean like towels for restaurants? Isn't that what? also Cisco? I think that one's with a C. Okay, it's a different Cisco. That yeah. one is the one that's owned by the thong song Cisco. <laughs> Got it. Which got makes it. Okay. sense. <laughs> yeah, laundry Just service. Like Classic. Clean things. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Um, so the Cisco, Chinese, China's Cisco internet was like super simple. It was basically super simple like filtering. Um, they had uh, basically a Google clone that they used. It, it was a Chinese designed clone of Google. But again, super simple stuff. Um, and during the time, during the 2000s, a lot of people felt that getting them more broad internet and and having it be more available would lead to a more democratic nation state in China, mm -hmm. as opposed to where it, I mean, it, it's still kind of in the same place <laughs> that it was right back then. Um, so Keep throwing spaghetti at the wall till one of them sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Give them internet. Maybe they will be a democracy. I don't know. <laughs> um, so then it, like fast forwarding to 2008, they had something that was called Freenet that was able to access the international internet. Um, but around that same time, the Chinese government was trying to crack down on essentially dissenters of the Chinese government, as well as a like religious sect i think at the time they weren't like a full-on like church necessarily and you've probably okay. seen it here in san francisco um falun gong they've i've mm -mm. i used to mm -mm. see them on the 38 outside of one of the chinese uh temples and they would have big signs that said falun gong so it's basically like a, a just a not mainstream religion that was co okay. popping up in china at the time and the government um, didn't like that. They didn't like that. Anything. Why, that, why is that? Because of, I mean, again, like the religious aspect of it, having uh -huh. any sort of any small thing that gets a lot of popularity. Basically, the Chinese government really does not like because they feel that it can lead to rebellion, uprising, protests, etc. Anything mm -hmm. that challenges the status quo, basically, which is what mm -hmm. Falun Gong, well, what they they viewed Falun Gong basically Potentially, potentially doing. So okay. they didn't like that. Um, and hated hated the Macarena when it came around. Hated the fucking Macarena. Hated yeah. the thong song too. That did sweep the nation. It really and the world. did. And the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and during this whole time, Google had been banned. Basically, from 2002 to 2006, they had banned Google. Um, it returned in 2006 in a censored form. Um, but again, as Google, like Western tech companies were advancing very quickly and China saw that as a potential threat. So as they saw that happening, they banned Google again. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I want to say relatively recently, I don't have exactly when the second ban happened. Um, I think you know at this least is... within the last two years for yeah. sure. Yeah. Do you know if this plays into why Yahoo was like so fucking popular and Asian countries for so long. Uh, that, that didn't would make come sense. up in my. That didn't come up, but that would make sense, yeah. depending on how the Chinese government viewed the two search engines, you know. Or if like Yahoo was willing to like play ball with them and like add their own sensors in or something. I don't know. Yeah, because I mean, in 2006 when Google came back, it was in a censored form. Like they let the Chinese yeah, government okay. basically tell Google China, "Hey, these are the keywords you need to like censor." And, and not right. make available. Um, another really important thing to, to, to sort of set 
down the framework of the rest of what we're about to talk about is that the majority of the Chinese population accesses the internet through their mobile phones as opposed to a desktop. At the okay. time the internet was coming out, desktops in China were extremely expensive, so they were reserved for like the high class elites, like the wealthy elites. And everybody else, the working class, didn't have the money to buy one. So mm -hmm. every fun fun insight. That still kind of <laughs> carries over to today where mobile gaming is huge. We are gonna get oh. to that, my man. Okay. Okay. That is okay. definitely a part of this. Um, so that's kind of a little bit of background, like 0.01% of Chinese right. internet uh, in the early yeah. 2000s. Oh, yeah. And out of all of this is where WeChat comes into play. WeChat, again, didn't start as WeChat initially. It was initially like a messaging app called QQ. Yeah, I'm imagining like a WhatsApp kind of thing. It was very similar to like a WhatsApp, very basic stuff. Um, and it mm. was developed by a company that you might recognize the name of called Tencent. One word. Tencent? Doesn't yeah. ring any bells for me. It definitely rings a bell. Also, so does QQ. Yeah, QQ is interesting because I have a coworker who knew about QQ. She's uh, Asian American. And mm. she was like, oh, yeah, I had a QQ account. It was like, you know, when people had Blackberries, what was the Blackberry? And Sidekicks. Yeah, exactly. Whatever mm. their messaging thing is. It was like, or AIM. It was like their version uh -huh. of oh, AIM. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. Basically. Cool. So Tencent might sound familiar if you've seen any, not any, but some <laughs> recent like uh, summer blockbuster movies. <sighs> Things like really? Aquaman, Venom, Bumblebee. I have a whole list here. Moonfall, which just came out. Terminator 6, Men in Black International, and they're also uh, involved in producing Top Gun 2. Oh, I'm so, so it's like a production company? It is. Or just a business with a shitload of money. I wrote here, uh, a very complicated techno empire and holding company. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking... <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> yeah, we'll buy that. <laughs> they might have. Yeah, we'll buy that. <laughs> they there might be a wing of the company that is involved in music. In fact, they own nine percent of Spotify. So, hey, that's a lot. <laughs> I, I just want to say, it ain't for nothing. The record, Theo, out of all those movies you listed, I should have seen more of them, but I've only seen one. It was the Men in Black International. Oh, one. that's like probably wow, the worst one on the pick. list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm like, I'm like, wow, I can't. This was like a really good level set for me. I'm just like, and I watched I Moonfall to think I was gonna get a chuckle out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. That movie's fucking terrible. Oh shit. <laughs> so Tencent, Woo. it was established in 2005 by like some Chinese tech bros, like their equivalent of like what you would have here, like a Mark Zuckerberg or whatever. But mm -hmm. the the thing is that it's to now today in 2022. It would be like if one company in the US owned Facebook, Instagram, PayPal, Amazon, Tinder, the concept of email, uh, oh and, and Spotify. <laughs> that's Shit. fucking, how is that? Le I mean, it's China, but that's insane. That's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, it's, um, it's it, so it doesn't count as a monopoly? Not in China. Yeah, I, I can't imagine that would be the case. So, Kyle, you also brought up the video game thing. They are yeah. also the world's, not China's, the world's most popular video game vendor. Yeah. Huh. It's insane. I have... Wow. Well, when you own a Monopoly... I know, right? It's kind of easy to do anything. <laughs> it's kind of easy to do whatever you want. You could be the world's leader in anything. Yeah. So they basically built uh, on mobile games and in-game microtransactions, and that's where a lot of their revenue comes yeah. from. Uh, oh my god, I'm sure. Which basically Fucking Farmville like crazy. Yeah, which basically means they clone IP. Uh, their most popular game is a game called Honor of Kings, um, and it's Sick. it's basically a League of Legends clone. But yeah. it, it it's I, I didn't put this in the notes, but basically you have to pay to even play the game like. Your character has like abilities and power sets and things like that. Mm -hmm. To access them, you have to pay for them. 
And like, oh, hmm. as you're just walking around doing one attack or something. Yeah, exactly. It is a ten billion dollar like, a year game for them. You're in the game. You're like all suited up. You're walking forward. You come to a bridge. It's like, well, you got to pay to cross it. And you're like, <laughs> you get across the bridge. It's like, well, you have to pay because you crossed it. Yeah. They also own five percent of Blizzard, uh, which I think oh. is Activision Blizzard now. Yeah, it's yeah. Blizzard Activision. Which. Uh, it, again, this is kind of I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but being being a shareholder in Activision Blizzard, they use their poll to suspend a pro gamer uh, who goes by the name of Blitz Blitz Chung after okay. he made a statement supporting the 2019 Hong Kong protests. Ooh, so they're yep. extremely powerful. Oof. Um, and I, again, I That's mentioned, scary. I mentioned the, uh, movies that they are, have their fingers in. Um, I, I wrote down, I, this isn't really a joke, but they're funding the Top Gun 2 movie and yeah. which is a bummer because it's not going to be as homoerotic as the first one <laughs> because the Chinese government really doesn't like any sort of gay stuff. <laughs> Did they yeah. have to cut some shit out during the screenings? I think I've heard something about this. So that happens a lot too. That I have that at like the end of this. But yeah, Tencent being a Chinese-owned company that's funding these, mm -hmm. when movies are made here in America, obviously it's two very different markets. And mm -hmm. movies like Star Wars The Last Jedi, Moonlight even, when it was released over there. Well, Moonlight's totally banned. They never released it over there. But um, uh, there's a couple other examples. Basically, yeah. they re-edit the movies for China. They'll totally yeah. cut, like, gay characters out, um, like, fully add new scenes. There was a, a scene in, Whoa. like, a, a Wolverine movie where it, I think it was Wolverine, where they, like, have these... Oh, no, it's Age of Ultron. <laughs> Where they add a scene of just like Chinese doctors that were not in the rest of the movie who mm -hmm. go to <laughs> fix Tony Stark's heart. And it's like a, a scene that only exists in the Chinese version. version. Whoa. Ooh, I kind of want to see if I can find that. It's straight up like propaganda shit. Um, That's wild. WeChat was released in 2011 and it became the world's largest standalone mobile app with more than 1.17 billion users as of 2022. Now, Ooh. Facebook. Is that not? Huh? Is that it? That's it. I mean, so, but this is the thing you kind of have to put it into perspective, right? Like, if Facebook has two point something billion users, but they mm -hmm. do like a handful of things, WeChat does every. You don't Everything. need another app. Yeah. So. Right. It, that's true it's insane um uh wow. and it's described as app for the app for everything or a super app um what a <clears throat> funny thing that they kept the name just even facebook is rebranding <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm just like you know what we're good we're just gonna keep it wechat <laughs> we, we started out as qq then we went to wechat we feel really good about that as we acquired everything else <laughs> yeah, we yeah. wechat um so I have here a little. We, we conquer. We we con we <laughs> conquer. No, we, we do conquer. we do that. We conquer. Yeah, we, we did it. <laughs> so the the big problem, which is what a lot of this, uh, what a lot of what I'm going to talk about revolves around, is this next part, which is that user activity on WeChat is analyzed, tracked, and shared with Chinese authorities upon request as part of the mass <laughs> surveillance network in China. WeChat censors politically sensitive topics in China. Data transmitted by accounts registered outside of China is also surveilled, analyzed, and used to build up censorship algorithms in China. Oh, hmm. Oh no. That sounds cozy. <laughs> I know. You, hey, wow. you know. You really don't have to think anymore when you've got one all-seeing hey, overlord. It's a super app. It's a super app. <laughs> 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 um, so this uh, app was released uh, during the country's um, 12th five-year plan. Now, a five-year plan in China is <laughs> basically... <Hang on. laughs> Wait, what? How many have started and stopped within the first five years? <laughs> I, I remember, like, you you flashed me back to, like, sitting with a college counselor being like, all right, so what's your five-year plan what do you, where do you see yourself in five years yeah. I'm like well i'm gonna start and stop a couple of these five-year plans <laughs> just bear with me i'm gonna i'm gonna do a lot of shit 
So a five-year plan in China is basically a governmental thing. It's a series of social and economic uh, development initiatives that was, that started in 1953. So this was just another one of those. It was the 12th one they go in cycles. So at the time they got a lot of funding and also I assume influence, like, hey, if you're gonna do this and the government's gonna give you all this money, um, here's here's our, our rider for what we need access to. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple <laughs> of different uh, like account types. Basically, users can register as a public account, which enables them to push feeds to subscribers and provide services. Users can also create an official account, which falls under service, subscription, or enterprise accounts. Um, basically, if you have a store or something and you want to sell products mm -hmm. to people, or if you're a musician or whatever, you would need a separate account, not just like the normal public one. Um, by 2014, the number of WeChat official accounts had reached 8 million which doesn't seem like a lot, but those are people who are selling services or things like that. Yeah. That's exactly. just businesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Um, That's wild. This is an important distinction because official accounts can be used as a platform for services. Well, it's a, sorry. It's, is this like a blue check mark kind of deal? Um, yeah, that's kind of what I was imagining. Uh, yeah, yeah, kind of. Um, but it is definitely more than like, what we're probably thinking of in terms of like a business selling products like fidget spinners or whatever, sure. whereas hospitals are a part of this. Uh, um, wow. So that's, that's a lot of access. Holy it's shit. Crazy. So you can use it for hospital pre-registrations, your visa renewal or, Ooh. or credit card service. Um, oh, no. yeah. So to create an official account, the applicant must also register with Chinese authorities which again discourages quote unquote foreign companies from getting in on on this. Yeah, because they control who can be in the bubble. Yeah. Right. And they also can see your bank account. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all it's it, like as I was doing the research, every couple of paragraphs, I would have to sit back away from the computer screen and just go, I, I just like uh, try and wrap it's, my head around yeah this it's kind of like just take it in, like you're like you're hearing this and you're like holy uh -huh. shit this is reality mm -hmm. for right. so many people yeah i definitely got chills after the uh the blizzard ban uh because that's uh, that's uncomfortable yeah uh, that is not fun <laughs> to think about um especially when like Man, I can't imagine being the person like at the joystick of diving into that kind of information. Like you're just like pulling information from yeah. all things. And you're like, well, I I can probably look up every single person's very dark history and how much they make and where they live and if they've been to the hospital recently. Yeah, and with their high score on Blizzard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How are they doing <laughs> in World of Warcraft? <laughs> um. So. Uh, I want to talk about the, they also have like a payment services. I mentioned that similar, they have a similar part of the app that functions as PayPal. Basically for non-Chinese users uh, of WeChat Pay, there's an, identi uh, an additional identifi identity verification process. So you have to provide a photo ID um, if you want to use their pay service uh, that they have. Um, mm -hmm. And as of March 2016, WeChat Pay had over 300 million users. Wow. Um, you, out, of, wait, out of how many total users again? Uh, oh, 1.17 billion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so in the same year of 2016, Tencent, their parent company, uh, introduced WeChat or yeah, WeChat Pay HK, which was a payment service for their Hong Kong users. Uh, transactions are carried out with the Hong Kong dollar, and in 2019, it was reported that Chinese users can use WeChat Pay in 25 countries outside of China, including Italy, South Africa, and the UK. Now, if you're not up to current events uh, in <laughs> in Asia, mm -hmm. um, there is an issue between the Chinese region and Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. um, an in, what'd you say? An incident? An issue. <laughs> an issue. Oh, an there issue. are issues and there have been incidents between them. So yes. many Hong Kongers have a sense of identity within Hong Kong culture and it differs 
quite a bit from mainland China in not only its politics, but its like systems and its cultures and its customs. So some young Hong Kongers have also started supporting Hong Kong independence, which mm-hmm. I you could probably guess China doesn't like that very much. Yeah. They didn't like it when John Cena called Taiwan its own nation instead of <laughs> which it being Chinese. Which fucking are. information. So this is a little weird. I don't know anybody living in Hong Kong who would feel comfortable using WeChat Pay HK. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, that sounds like a big trap. It's a trap. So um, I, I mentioned that there's the business accounts. There is. Uh, there's also an enterprise version of WeChat, which basically companies can use. Um, so for work purposes, companies and business communications, a special version of WeChat called Enterprise was launched in 2016. It does a couple of things for you and your employees. One, it's meant to help employees separate work from private life. Don't know oh, how. Oh, that's good. I don't know how. That must be like the big that's selling fun. point. <laughs> we swear you can keep these separate. <laughs> While it also lets uh, companies and their employees keep track of annual leave days, expenses that need to be reimbursed, Mm, time off requests, and clock-ins to show that they were at work. So all of this information is tracked by your company, who is now in the pocket of WeChat. Oh, also, if you travel, just book it through WeChat. Yeah, where are you going? Hey! If you're going to pay for anything, just use WeChat. I saw you put in the time off request uh, yeah. through Enterprise, and uh-huh. I was just wondering <laughs> where do you think oh you're going, God. huh? Where, uh, where the fuck do you think you're going? I, you're maxed out. <laughs> you're maxed out, bud. Um, more recently, terrifying. It is terrifying. More, it sounds like yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> more recently, they started uh, a, another part of WeChat called WeChat Channels which is basically like TikTok and YouTube smashed together. Um, Mm -hmm. You are allowed to upload short videos. Um, Users can create and share videos, I think up to an hour. They do. Do do you have any scope or like understanding of the quality of the UI? Like I've seen some screenshots. It, I mean, that's the other thing. As I got through this too, I was like, what does this app even look like, man? Like how, how does it function? It's, There's so many components. It's just like, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So it basically has, it's like really simple. There's, it's just a white. And then it has basically bullet pointed options of all of these different things. So you click on it and then it opens another window. But like, I think the home screen looks like that. Like whatever wow. your account is populates with just literally bullet points of all the stuff that you can access. You would um, think that it would be easier to just sell a WeChat phone. I, yeah, that's you know? it. I, yeah, which is interesting. I didn't think about that until you just said that. But why, like, uh, how Google makes the Google phone? I don't know why. Yeah, because then they it, would, do. it would have I, all of those things just already in it. I'm not, frankly, not trying to give out any good ideas here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you when you were describing it, Harlan, as like having all those things, I imagined it opening it up like an iPhone or an Android phone with all the apps just yeah. on like in a. It, in the, I mean, screen. it is. I that's uh, yeah. If it's again, I don't know. Maybe there is a WeChat phone or a phone that's specifically made for WeChat. Um, I I didn't see anything in my research about that. Mm-hmm. I assume it is a similar thing where it is its own icon. You can have all your other shit in there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when it opens, it looks it looks like a really boring like I don't know like a work app. You know how they're kind of utilitarian and uh-huh. very simple. It looks kind of like that from the few screenshots that I saw. Interesting. <laughs> be funny if you open it and it's just like <clears throat> fucking 
just chaos. Ah! <laughs> just All of them are moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, just make drag. a selection to make it stop. It's, it's, make a selection to make it stop. It's like when you <laughs> open a open desktop and you like go to a shitty website and they have all those ads pop up. You're just like, oh, hang on. Yeah. Wait, no, I need to clock in, but I need to get my visa renewed. Hang on. Wait, hang on. Fuck. <laughs> like minority reporting that shit around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so... Yeah, you can upload hour-long videos to uh, their WeChat channels. There's 300 million users. Um, in this month of this year, there was, however, a six-minute video montage of audio clips from the COVID-19 lockdown that was happening in Shanghai. And the video mm-hmm. is titled The Voice of April. Um, it, its emphasis was on the lockdown's human toll, uh, and it struck a chord with the people, and it became... Uh, shared quite widely and rapidly. I yeah, caught wind I of that. Definitely <laughs> saw that video. Yeah. So, uh, and it's again, China has been notorious in trying to squash, like, uh, you know, like I said, dissenters, protests, any sort of talk about how the go- the Chinese government is failing or mm-hmm. all the bad shit. So this, uh, and because they were in lockdown, not people couldn't go do that like they had in the past. So this was a, turned into sort of a form of using the technology provided to them essentially by the government to protest digitally. So mm-hmm. it, it went around all over the place, uh, but Chinese state censors began scrubbing it from the platforms, mm-hmm. uh, prompting people to find clever ways to dodge censorship and help it reach the next viewer. They did this in a couple of different ways. Uh, they would disguise the video by embedding it in other clips. Uh, they would overlay its audio onto other videos. Um, and sometimes they would use QR codes to share the link rather than do any you, sort of text. Do you know anyone like of anyone who was sharing this kind of thing that was able to be tracked from their using their app and then get like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, don't know, I mean, they were, I'm sure anybody that the censors found sharing this were 100 put on a list um oh yeah, yeah. i don't yeah, i don't yeah. know any individuals this is from an article I ha- i'll have the links in this um i can't remember where the article is from but um where they talked to somebody who the guy that's that made the video um god knows hope he's okay <laughs> um <Yeah. laughs> uh so that that's one way that uh the Chinese people are kind of trying to take this back a little bit. Um, so, sorry, I lost my place. Uh, in 2015, WeChat offered, uh, which you guys might have heard about this too, they offered a heat map, which featured, uh, or sorry, a heat map feature that showed crowd density in China. Um, uh, interesting. <laughs> Quartz yeah. columnist uh, Josh Horwitz alleged the feature is being used by the Chinese government to, oh, I've deleted my notes here. There's more to that sentence. <laughs> to basically keep an eye on any irregular movements among the Chinese people. Oh, weird. Wow. Yeah. That's so, the nice thing to keep track yikes. of their bowel movements. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Can't a heat map. Am I right, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely something that you can add on to that app. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm, Track my irregular movements. I'm not sure why this was made public, like to normal everyday users of WeChat. It didn't specify. I, I again, I should have clarified this at the beginning. There is so much to this app and what's going on in China in terms of surveillance mm-hmm. that I there was no way I was going to be able to go deep on this. So a lot of this is just from like the Wikipedia and a couple of articles that I found just to really simplify this episode for the listener. So I don't know why this heat map was made available, but again, the Chinese government has full access to the WeChat data. And of course they're going to use this. So kind of crazy. Um, There were already some problems with the business thing uh, as more people uh, joined the WeChat business accounts, um, more problems arose. Uh, there were some sellers uh, with those, like uh, like I said, the professional accounts who were f- physically selling real products. 
Um, they started to sell fake luxury goods such as bags, clothing, and watches. Um, mm -hmm. And sellers, there's also a scam that was going around where sellers disguised themselves as international flight attendants or overseas students uh, where they would post fake, quote unquote, stylish photos claiming that they can provide overseas purchasing services but sell fake luxury goods at the same price as the real ones. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seems like quite the wish. long con. <laughs> yeah, that's a long walk for a short amount of money. Wow. Um, there were also other products that were being sold, specifically things like facial masks. Not mm -hmm. what we know of as medical facial masks, but like cosmetic beauty facial masks. Yeah, yeah, beauty masks. And much like Amway... <laughs> Which I know it doesn't mm. fall in the category of the internet, but Amway is a whole fucked up thing too. It's we can like find our way into it. It's there's, like there's the, a lot of MLMs we can explore. I mean, yeah, just talking about MLMs at some point would be incredible. But um, who had been investigated by the by the FTC multiple times? Um, uh, they were selling unbranded products from illegal factories. Now this doesn't seem like a big deal on the surface, but. It's kind of a big deal. When it's <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I think to like the normal person, it's like, well, what could be wrong? It's a face mask. Not a big deal. But the thing is, is that those contain chemicals and things like Acid. that. For and sure. microchips. Yeah. They're tracking your health patterns. I'm just imagining rubbing like salt in mayonnaise on my face. Like that's what it's just like exfoliation. To smuggle in the microchips I, to track you. I just got right, an image yeah. of that scene in The Dark Knight where Harvey Dent gets his face burned off. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's a big thing is that like they're not regulated. So God knows what the fuck are in these face masks that could cause you fit like physical like health risks um these mlm things that exist on wechat are difficult uh for customers to defend their rights because a large number of them uh their identities are anonymous uh, or uncertified um there's also a lack of any sort of supervisional mechanism in wechat to provide opportunities or that provides opportunities for criminals to continue illegal behavior like this so there's no stop gap to yeah you know prevent it in the first place it seems like one of those things cool. where they're like how can we squeeze more money out of this app just let people yeah. start selling it and we'll take a fee we don't give a shit we don't need to certify you go for it <laughs> yeah so jesus christ <clears throat> um which is like i mean we have that it's amazon let's be real god knows <laughs> yeah. the type of shit <laughs> you're buying on amazon <laughs> and but amazon's at a certain scale right yeah exactly it's a big one yeah but this is this is all. This, this is, is billions this is, of people they have access <laughs> yeah. to. Yeah. So not, not, I'm not defending Amazon by any means. I'm just just pointing out the difference. I think it, unless you're a new listener, I don't think anybody who's listened to any previous episode <laughs> right. would think that we were some Jeff Bezos simp's. <laughs> so um, this leads into. Um, the fact that other luxury brands have used WeChat and partnered with them um, amidst all of this uncertified, you know, sellers selling acid face masks. So you right. have <laughs> companies like Burberry, uh, okay. uh -huh. Michael Kors, L'Oreal, um, uh, uh, Wikipedia had this other bullet point that didn't specify uh, any other companies except for the fact that there were 60 Italian companies that have okay. worked with WeChat to promote their product. WeChat apparently has an office in Milan. Um, which, well, you have to have an office in Milan. Which it seems like <laughs> such a weird juxtaposition, and maybe it's the fact that I've never been to Milan, but I think it's all like old stone buildings, and then just like a big giant green WeChat logo on one of them <laughs> just seems really out of place. Um... So they got licenses to operate uh, their business in China. 95% uh, of global luxury brands use WeChat, which is... I mean, if they uh, want to sell in China, I'm sure that's kind of the only way in. You yeah, know? it like, could be you that... You kind of have to play ball with with your, you know... Yeah, it could be that they're forced uh, to do that because I understand. I mean, we see it in Hollywood. We're catering to the Chinese market by re-editing entire movies um it's just like a i mean it's like 
I don't know, maybe it's the idealist in me that's like, it's such a bummer that these companies wouldn't put their foot down. But at the same time, it's like, they don't, they are, it's all about their bottom yeah. line. Yeah, it's money, baby. Yeah, and it really fucking sucks because a lot of people are getting... Capitalism <laughs> is ruining the world. It, it was capitalism all along. It was <laughs> capitalism, damn. So, I've already mentioned state surveillance, um, but we're going to get into this a little bit more. WeChat, as with, I assume, other tech companies in China, operate under Chinese law, which includes strong censorship provisions and interception protocols. Its parent company is obliged to share data with the Chinese government under the Chinese Internet Security Law and National Intelligence like, Law. They can't even withhold it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have to. They have to. Uh, they can access and expose the text messages, contact books, and location histories of its users. The Chinese government uh, uses WeChat as a data source to conduct mass surveillance in China. That's just knowledge that's out there. Right, yeah. That's not like some Snowden shit where it's like, oh, we had to have a whistleblower tell us that. No, it's it's in the terms of service. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you clicked accept, my man. <laughs> um, so, um, but... Some states and regions, such as India, Australia, and the United States, and Taiwan, fear that the app poses a threat to national and regional security for various reasons. I wonder what those wonder. could be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in June of 2020, the government of India banned WeChat, along with 58 other Chinese apps, citing data and privacy issues. Uh, this was in response to a border clash between India and China earlier in the year. There's a oh. quote from the Indian government that says they were stealing and surreptitiously transmitting users' data in an unauthorized manner to servers which have locations outside of India and that it was hostile to national security and defense of India. So... You, yeah, <laughs> you, I think you got a point there. Do you, Harlan, do you know how <laughs> wide the usage is outside of China or is it just... So Chinese users, ninety percent of users are Chinese. Okay. Um, which, let's see, that's still what like a hundred million people are using it outside of China. If I did my I math guess, like, right, yeah. I guess I'm just curious, like uh, other countries that do use it. So like India is one, but maybe now that they're not using it anymore, is it like prevalent in other countries? Is it? It. I mean, it seems kinda? like it is. I one of the things I looked at to try and find some stuff out was like. I kept getting articles, f American news articles, being like, how to use WeChat to promote your business. No. And I was like, wow. ah, wait, hang on. No, stop. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. So it's I think it's becoming more prevalent here. It seems to be something. That, yeah. Oh, uh oh, Ooh. Ooh. Uh, it seems to be something that is spreading. You know, obviously, the closer proximity you are to China, I'm sure the. The, the heat, hey, the heat map heat of map. how many, yeah, how many countries and users are using WeChat gets sort of, you know, lessens as you get further away. Well, because you kind of like have to use it to like live in the modern world. Yeah, in, in yeah. China I mean, specifically, in China too. Sure, but yeah, yeah that, my question was like, if there's people in like Milan that would be using it, if that was like a <laughs> thing, you know, yeah, like it, if Italy is somehow adopted part of it because there's a headquarters the there. presence like yeah. yeah yeah i mean yeah that could be one of the things it i didn't go too de in it, too much into detail about finding you know what other countries use it the most because a lot of countries have began begun to ban it um obviously taiwan being so close to china is one and with all of the international relations problems that they have with china um but uh, specific, here, I have another thing. Legislators in Taiwan were concerned that the potential exposure of private communications was a threat to regional security. Um, uh, and then uh, here's, here's, some, here's some, uh, some scores, some awards that uh, Tencent and WeChat got from Amnesty International. In 2016, uh, they were awarded a score of zero out of 100 in an Amnesty <laughs> International report oh, ranking wow. <laughs> ranking technology companies on the way they implement encryption to protect the human rights of their users. 
Yeah, didn't Zero. Facebook get like a 50 on that or something recently? I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the other companies got, but the fact that this is on a list with 11 other companies, including mm-hmm. Facebook, Apple, and Google. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you have to be doing That's... so poorly if you're zero on the same list as those companies. <laughs> yeah. Um, some of the things that they did not have and why they got a zero was that Tencent did not make use of end-to-end encryption. They did not recognize online threats to human rights. They did not disclose <sighs> government requests for data. They did not publish specific data about its use of encryption. Because they don't give a shit. They don't yeah. give a fuck. They did, however, post the social security numbers and credit card information and bank account and uh, health information mm-hmm. and uh, uh-huh. biometric data yep and, and your high scores uh, uh-huh. your high school graduation yep. gpa that's um, right also uh the name of your first pet that's and right your mother's maiden name yep they posted all of that mm-hmm. i wonder yep. i like uh, the amount of stuff that they let the government see i'm curious if it's not just like one big red button that some guy just goes bonk, like there you go, here you go. I am not gonna go sift through all of that shit. What are you joking? Yeah, just take what you need, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like. export all. Um, so, have you guys ever gotten rid of like a Facebook or Instagram account before, and you like do the one button download for everything? Yes, and yeah, yeah it's like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> download profile. <laughs> it's just, it's just like a, a personal information buffet. Yeah, yeah, a smorgasbord, if you will. For- for mm-hmm. me, it's a cringe factory. Mm. Uh, if I ever want to go back and look at some of the shit I put on the internet. It's yeah. a human rights violation factory is what it is. Facebook <laughs> included. <laughs> I, I think everything yeah. that anyone's ever posted on Facebook in their late teens and early 20s. <laughs> it's a crime. It violated some <laughs> some kind of human rights. <laughs> so in 2017, uh, there was an update to the pl- platform's privacy policy detailing the log data collected by WeChat, which included search terms, profile visits, and content that had been viewed within the app, communication between WeChat users, including call times, duration, location information. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Um, Which was all used by Tencent for targeted advertising and marketing purposes, uh, but was also most likely disclosed to representatives of the Chinese government. This. We're, I mean, we're we're going through some of this, acting like uh, Google and Apple don't also do these things. Totally but not not. I, I I'm gonna wager not to the egregious extent that this particular company is doing. We hope. We hope. We yeah. hope. Fingers crossed, everybody. Well, and um, and that was the thing that I was trying to. At least it's not all fucking connected on one app. Yeah, that was yeah. that was the thing I was trying to wrap my head around because every time I would see something like what I just read, I was like. Man, that's crazy. But then I would go, well, I know Google and other companies do that. Like we've, there have been court cases about this. Yeah. Uh, So it's like, uh, I mean, they do the same thing, but it's like, yeah, but there was never a court case where the government versus Facebook happened. It's just like, hey, we don't need to do that in China. We're just going to tell you we can take all that stuff. We're doing it. Yeah, we're doing doing it. it. Yeah, exactly. Like, so yeah, it... (laughs) Like, our government at least sometimes sort of pretends like they don't want this to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's is, it's performative. It's for show. sure. Yeah, it's for show. Which is, like, kind of shittier, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. In a way. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I kind of like, I, I like to, I like to live in that world where I'm like, yeah, maybe if th- somebody's fighting for my rights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you like to live with hope. You like yeah. Live with hope. Uh, yeah. I am a half gl- glass half full kind of fella. I mean, anytime I get to see Bernie Sanders up there, yell at some billionaires, that gives me a little <laughs> bit of hope. You know what I mean? They, yeah. China has no Bernie Sanders. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> they killed that version a long say, time ago. They, they probably had one. They had one. They've probably had many. <laughs> oh, um, so in May 2020, Citizen Lab published a study that claimed that WeChat monitors foreign chats to hone its censorship algorithm. So now they're reaching out uh, across, you know, the border and listening into other people's conversations in other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a story that I have here. From August 14th of 2020, Radio Free Asia reported that in 2019, Gao Zhigang, a Chinese uh, citizen, used WeChat to forward a video to his friend in the U.S. 
Gao was later convicted on the charge of the crime, and this is real, picking quarrels and provoking troubles. Picking quarrels? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I do that on a daily basis. <laughs> oh, I love to pick a quarrel and provoke troubles. I love troubles. to pick a quarrel. I go out and I, <laughs> I love to stand back, back to back with another man and walk 10 paces and then shoot him. <laughs> I'm a simple man. I like to go to the woods and pick a quarrel with a squirrel. <laughs> like, that nut is mine. <laughs> all right. We all have our individual things, and Kyle's yeah. is fighting squirrels. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's more just getting in their face about the nuts that are clearly mine. It's more about the cardio workout that you get doing it. <laughs> and, you know, honestly, I get a rush out of it. I enjoy yeah. the rush. Yeah. <laughs> um, Gao was sentenced to 10 months in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was great timing. <laughs> um, they also, I, I, I tried to cut this story down because it's quite long and obviously more, there's more shit that happens, but they also like, they used facial recognition to like find his friend in the States to, oh to sort of God. like reverse engineer, like finding him, I think is how it worked. It was fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> Jesus. This oh, is just a no. side note. This happened in the same year of 2020, but Chevron Corporation mandated that all its employees delete WeChat from company issued phones. Oh my God. They were like, we've dumped hundreds of millions of gallons of oil in the ocean. We've killed countless species, but mm -hmm. this is the line. <laughs> well, this <laughs> has to stop. <laughs> Uh, no that was chat. honestly probably to protect the company and as opposed yes. to the individuals. Oh, yeah. Big, <laughs> company secrets. 100%. That, that is a, well, we don't want them to know where our money is going. Yeah, exactly. Let's see, following, this is 2019, so following the overwhelming victory of pro-democracy candidates in the Hong Kong local elections, WeChat began censoring messages related to the election and disabled the accounts of posters in other countries, such as the US and Canada. Uh, many of those uh, targeted were of Chinese ancestry. Um, in 2020, WeChat started censoring messages concerning the COVID-19 pandemic. And in December of 2020, WeChat blocked a post by Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison during a diplomatic spat between Australia and China. Uh, Morrison okay. had criticized a doctored image posted by a Chinese diplomat. <laughs> so it sounds like they made some propaganda. China did. Put it out there. And he was like, wait, that didn't happen. <laughs> Stop. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't do that. So one of the bigger issues, which we kind of mentioned in terms of the movies cutting out like any sort of LGBTQ uh, characters, is that that's just something China does, similarly to Russia, right? They crack mm -hmm. down on those minority groups. Um, and in July of 2021, several WeChat accounts associated with China's university campus LGBTQ movements Wow, the fact that they even had that um, yeah. were blocked and then deleted without warning. Some of the accounts, which consisted of a mix of registered student clubs and unofficial grassroots groups, had operated for years as safe spaces for China's LGBTQ youth with tens of thousands of followers. <clears throat> um, WeChat closed the accounts, uh, or uh, yeah, cl the closed accounts display message said that they had, quote, violated internet regulations without giving further details. Account names were deleted and replaced with unnamed, uh, with a notice claiming that all content was blocked and accounts were suspended after receiving uh, relevant complaints. Um, and then, like I said, not to mention movies produced by Tencent, who owns WeChat, mm -hmm. uh, that were marketed um, to, to, to China were cutting out queer characters for influencing or influencing how prominent those characters are featured. So I have a list here. Last Jedi, <laughs> yep. the new Fantastic Beasts movie. Apparently something with oh, Dumbledore yeah. cause he's gay. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, they cut 40 <laughs> minutes out of Cloud Atlas. Um, 40 minutes? That's like, what? <laughs> it's like a, a good chunk of the fucking movie. I know. Left. Of the movie. Even it's just a tight 30. 
<laughs> You're just in and out. Um, also, uh, Brokeback Cloud Mountain, <laughs> Brokeback Mountain, and Moonlight uh, are completely banned and have never been released. In oh, I was gonna say, I, Brokeback I, Mountain's I like, just how a. How did you? They totally reworked about the movie. Two dudes. Couple guys go out to the woods and this eat beans. Great and the pals. wife is lonely at home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are they doing in that tent all night? Great, great buds. So yeah, just <laughs> real good dudes, man. So that uh, one's interesting because I was reading about it and um um oh I'm blanking on the director's <laughs> name, Ang Lee. He's Chinese, and the Chinese government like congratulated him on winning the Academy Award for his gay movie, but then they never <laughs> released his gay movie in China. So it's this really fun thing. Is it bad that I call it a gay movie? <laughs> I, th I think it's... Wait, no, I mean... It's accurate. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I like the idea. I mean, because you're using it like as if it's, it's a like, good thing. It. That movie yeah. is so <laughs> gay, dude. Oh my god, it's incredible. <laughs> Taking it back. We've totally um, flipped from like 15 years ago where it was used yeah. derogatorily. <laughs> now gay is like cool. <laughs> Bro, that shit is gay. Dude, it's so gay. <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> oh, um, um, that's but yeah. I, it reminds me of like my big fat Greek wedding for some reason, but like my big fat gay wedding. <laughs> yeah, <Sure. it's>, yeah. <laughs> my big fat gay movie. My big that, fat gay movie. That, that movie. That movie there is not is. allowed in China. No, definitely not that one. <laughs> definitely not. Um. Uh. So yeah, that's that's WeChat. Um. There's like I said, so much more stuff that could be talked about. Um. That I I had to cut. This was initially like eight pages of notes. And I got it down to five or six at this point. Yeah. Um, there's, crazy. there's so much. Um, I, I mean, also, there's so many features on this app. I'm sure there's. Yeah, I mean, you could dive into each individual little widget yeah. in WeChat and really just yeah. have a field day. But I do also want to say, and this will go in the YouTube video. Uh, go watch Ordinary Things is video on Tencent and WeChat. It's very good. It's 20 minutes, not an hour. Um, so, and it's that's all, like it's about as long as Cloud Atlas. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. The finished product of the Chinese version of Cloud Atlas, about twenty minutes. Um, I'll put a little link in the video, but you should also go check it out if you're listening. Um, he does also other really great stuff. Um, some of this stuff also came from Tech Review Online and USA Today. I will link those in the description. And that's it. Um, it's nice. it's it's slowly gonna infiltrate the rest of the world. I, I don't see how it couldn't. You know, <sighs> it it's <laughs> China will know everything. It's literally like one of those companies in anime that has like some super brutal name. Uh, mm -hmm. like Falcon Heavy is the corporation and they're just <laughs> making military grade weapons and technology that now run the whole world. Yeah. It, it it's literally that. Uh, and it's called Tencent. Um, so Tencent. don't use it, please, Very God. Cute. Don't use this app. <laughs> a people company. A pe Tencent. A people company. <laughs> Those will yeah. be the ads when they hit America finally. <laughs> anyway, in in everything. Thank you for listening, and good luck out there. <laughs> <laughs>